I'm Bray Miller and I'm going to walk you through six basic tips to how to find mule deer in an area you've never stepped foot in before. What I can always start off by saying is mule deer hunting is an art and not a science. A lot of stuff about mule deer can be based on science, but once you get in the field, you just kind of got to throw that out. Mule deer are very unpredictable, kind of hard to find, kind of hard to pattern, but a lot of these tips will help you get in the zone to try to uh, look at mule deer next hunt. So first one I want to start off by saying is finding the edge habitat. So edge habitat to me is going to be that area next to some heavy timber, but also a little bit open patch of groceries. So we want to find that, you know, the vegetation that the mule deer want to key in on. And I'm trying to focus on big mature deer and a lot of those big mature deer are not going to be roaming out in the open. Like, yeah, you can probably find as much deer in the open in the summer. They're more patternable out in the open, easy to see. But once those deer start getting pressure, they're going to start kind of hanging out near that edge habitat because the edge habitat is also where a lot of the vegetation, like I said, is going to be a little more lush, get a little more water on it because you have the trees right next to it. And that's just areas where deer feel comfortable because they have the cover, they have the ability to escape pressure when it comes, but also they'll you know feed out in those little tiny little edge habitats. So when I'm looking at spots on a map to east scout, I try to find timber with that edge habitat. That's key to me. I don't want to find those big giant open basins. Mainly what I'm talking about is hunting in October and hunting in November. Like I said, early season stuff, kind of a little bit different, kind of a little easier to find mule deer, so I'm not gonna really focus on that. So edge habitat's gonna be really, really key to looking a bunch of big deer. So second tip is gonna be isolation. So obviously you can kill a deer, especially a big mule deer, pretty much anywhere. Easy access areas, you know, close to roads, close to towns, that sort of thing. But to me, if I can find areas that are more isolated, I'm actually gonna be hunting deer on their own terms. This is how deer just react on a daily basis. They don't have to worry about, you know, bunch of you know traffic from people hiking or road traffic ATVs that sort of thing so I want to find places that are more remote obviously it's gonna be more physically challenging to go in those remote places but to me I'm gonna find deer easier if I go into more remote places if I have to physically you know stress my body out deer are obviously living up there every single day they're super strong they're super capable of you know handling all those environments so they're gonna be more apt to giving you a little glimpse of their lifestyle because of the isolation and just a lot less people, a lot less traffic. So isolation is gonna be really key. So I'm just trying to find remote basins, away from trails, away from trailheads, away from roads, that sort of thing. Just kind of key in on those areas because to me, that just leaves me more success. I only have a certain amount of time when I'm hunting, so I wanna put myself in the best place to find a deer. The third step of this process is to basically look at terrain in super high detail. So what I mean by that is, let's say you draw a tag for a unit. Maybe it's one unit, maybe it's several units. I will sit down every single night for a very long period of time, maybe a full week on my computer, and to zoom in and look at every sort of piece of terrain. I wanna know how every ridge line lies, how every basin looks. I just wanna look at all the different features of it because it feels like to me when I do that, it just, I wanna know the terrain like the back of my hand. I wanna know what the deer sees, but I wanna be able to see it from obviously an east gun perspective because I'm not gonna have time to maybe scout these areas on foot. And so I will zoom in, pan the camera around in 3D on go hunt maps, and just get a feel for how the terrain lies, what, what an east-facing slope looks like, what a west-facing, north-facing, all that sort of thing is gonna give me a, a better picture of the whole process of how to find deer. And eventually I'm gonna figure out, you know, based on past experiences, where those deer might be. But if I just like, you know, look at a unit zoomed out and not look zooming in as far, I might miss some of these intricate little details about a ridge line or about a little system of the mountain that possibly could hold a bunch of deer. So I will just zoom in, spend a lot of time dropping a bunch of waypoints like, hey, I think, you know, deer potentially could be here, could be there. And once I zoom back out later, I'll have a big picture of, hey, these spots really look great to me on a map. These are areas I probably want to consider. And then I'll start honing in on maybe making my hunt plan more towards those certain little features that I find that actually look good on a map. So step number four is, might seem really simple to, uh, for starters, it's just finding glassing areas. So finding glassing points is going to be super, super important, but also don't just figure like, oh, here's a high ridge. It's going to be a glassing area. I want to find a spot where I could glass, but also move around a little area. Because if I glass an area for a while in the morning, eventually the deer are going to start bedding. Shadows are going to start to appear in different spots. I want to be able to move down a ridge, re-glass to be able to look back into those shadows. Because a lot of times those bucks are going to be really hard to locate. And just by moving a little bit and re-glassing, you actually can start picking up animals that you didn't even know were there. And so I'm trying to find areas where I can glass multiple spots or go down another ridge line or hike all around the mountain, re-glass it from right below where I was. A lot of times there's deer right below you, you just can't see them in your one glassing spot. So don't try to hone in on just, hey, this is my main glassing spot. It's the spot I have to glass from. Move around, re-glass from different areas 
and just mark all those spots on the map ahead of time. More things you mark on your map in e-scouting, the better plan you have going forward on a hunt. And like I always say, the more plans you have, the more apt you are to kill a deer when you get on the field. So we'll go step five, water. Um, I don't put a lot of emphasis on finding water for mule deer because to me, everything I've seen, mule deer get a lot of their water requirements from vegetation. So I'm not trying to find like, hey, I need to find this pond because I need deer, expect deer to water from it. Yeah, they might do that, but for the most part, they're gaining a lot of water from the vegetation, the dew in the morning, rainfall. They just have small seeps on the mountain. So I'm not really focused on, I need to find water to find deer because even a lot of these high country spots don't have the water to begin with. I might look for water just for myself so I know how to pack it to my camp. But for the most part, I'm not really keying in on a bunch of water sources when I'm trying to locate these like little hidden gem mule deer areas. All right, step six in how to find mule deer is going to be utilizing the terrain analysis tool and elevation bands. So terrain analysis tool is a very powerful tool. You guys have heard me talk about it a lot, but it allows me to basically highlight certain areas of mountain where it's slope was elevation aspect to try to key in on places I've seen mule deer in the past. Because like I said, every time I'm in the field, I mark all sorts of waypoints. I mark where I see the does. That information is going to be valuable if I was hunting in November because eventually if I mark all those doe spots and I come back to it a few days later, a buck could finally slip into those areas. So that's going to be key to me is usually a terrain analysis tool just to give a better visualization of the mountain. And you've also heard me talk about a lot how I extrapolate all my old data, all my old kill sites, all those old places I see deer in other states, other units. And if I'm hunting a new spot, I will take all those other data. Why was that mule deer in that terrain? what sort of you know habitat was holding that deer and i'll extrapolate that information into a new spot to put myself at a bigger advantage when i haven't stepped foot in that unit before so that's all gonna be really key and i also use elevation bands based on seasonality where deer are going to be and you guys can check a little graphic to have all my little elevation bands broken out but basically i have it written down here i'm going to read it this is the what i basically define like a seasonality or an elevation band from mule deer which is usable habitat during a certain core time periods of a mule deer's seasonal needs to survive. So basically what that is, is a snapshot in time of exactly what a mule deer needs to survive. And you can use that information depending on what season you have a tag for. So you have October hunt, they're gonna to need to be in certain elevation, certain habitat, they're gonna be in the timber. You can use that information. If you have a late season hunt, you might wanna focus on more of the does, some of the transitional ranges. And if you have a high country hunt, obviously they're gonna be up higher and more of the open, you know, easy to see. Uh, elevation area. So you can use a lot of like basically mule deer biology to help you when you're e-scouting. That's what I live on and I trust a lot of the mule deer biology reports, you know, different things you can get off off the internet because biology reports are actually a gold mine of information. You guys should all utilize those. All right, so that's basically a quick little rundown on six little tips that will definitely help you get your foot in the door to find mule deer for your next hunt. Obviously there's a lot of other things you can look at, uh, covered a lot of different strategies on e-scouting, mule deer biology, mule deer habits on the Go Hunt website. So you can check out all those articles there. If you have any questions at all, be sure to drop them in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe. And best of luck this fall.